According to Terry Real, there's a situation in which depression often gets misdiagnosed, and it usually happens when we're working with men. So how can we be better at identifying depression in men, particularly when it's masked by other symptoms? What you see in men is, there are some men, oh, I don't know, one in three, let's say, who uh, experience and express depression in the same way that uh, we classically think of. You know, you're depressed, you don't sleep or eat or too much sleeping or eating. Uh, you feel guilty, you lack pleasure, or the classic signs of depression. I call that overt depression. But a lot of men have what I call covert depression. You don't see the depression itself. What you see are the uh, defenses against the depression. You see the defenses, uh, the footprints of, uh, of the depression. And they show up in classically male difficulties, such as self-medication, violence, uh, womanizing, acting out, withdrawal. So I'm not saying that every man who is a drinker or a drugger or womanizer is depressed, but I am saying that many actually are. And what you re the, the ones that get well treated happen to get a dual diagnosis, but most of them, the depression gets missed. You have to treat both the uh, defense, the pattern of self-medication, for example, the drinking or the drugging, and you have to treat the depression that's underneath that. And uh, it's really a two-step process. So one of the things I say is that the cure for a covert depression in men is an overt depression. Uh, that once you stop the defensive maneuvers, the underlying depression will come up to the surface. You don't have to go after it. It will show itself. And then you can treat that just like you treat a woman's depression. But it's a two-step process. And um, the, the, the issue here is that men are ashamed of being depressed in ways that women are not. Uh, both carry the stigma of a mental disorder, but it's not unwomanly to be depressed, but it is unmanly to be overwhelmed with your feelings and to be vulnerable. And a lot of men hide it. They hide it from family members. They hide it from family physicians, the first line of defense. And uh, they hide it even from themselves by fleeing into these other behaviors. As Terry said, when we're working with men, there might be defense patterns that we need to address before the classic signs of depression surface. And recognizing when a client might be experiencing covert depression could help us better target our treatment plans. Now I'd like to hear from you. How will you use this in your work today? Please leave a comment below, and thanks for watching.